Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com and today we're taking a closer look at and of course installing the Beltec Stage 3 lowering kit with the plus 2, minus 2 front and the minus 3 rear available for the 09-14 F-150 excluding the Raptor model. You should be checking out this Stage 3 kit from Beltec if you're looking for a pretty inclusive kit here that's going to lower your truck a specific amount to what you want your truck to look like. This kit here is a really affordable way to do things correctly. This kit has an adjustable front and a solid rear to give you the look that you want. So you can lower your truck and level it at the same time. Now this kit has that plus two minus two front, which basically means that these front struts that'll be replacing your factory struts, not only are an upgrade in compression and ride quality, but they're also made specifically to handle a larger two inch lift or a lower minus two inch lowering kit at the front. Now this kit here uses a pretty unique method in accomplishing that. Underneath of your bottom strut seat, you'll have little spacer rings. Now there are eight millimeter and 16 millimeter rings here to incrementally accomplish what size lift or lower you want at the front. No rings included on the strut will get you a minus two front to lower it all the way, which is what we're gonna be doing to this 12 FX4 behind me. With that said, let's talk about tire fitment. Now when you lower your truck two inches, we're not talking about fitting 33s or 35s anymore like you would be with a lift kit. With a lowered truck down two inches, you're either gonna be running your stock wheel or you're gonna be upgrading to a low profile tire, or even drag radials if you're looking to track your truck. Now with this particular option here, we're gonna be using our factory tires you see behind me. Now when it comes to lifting your truck, you do have the ability to do that with this front kit, but the purpose of this kit is to lower your truck. It is not recommended to raise it two inches and lower the rear three inches. That's not a ride quality that you're probably gonna be comfortable with. It's also not what the kit is meant to do. These front struts are used for other applications from Beltec, which they've told us, in which case it can be lifted. It's recommended to lower it though. Now, as far as the rears are concerned, there's a couple of big upgrades here as well, not only in the category, but for Beltec as well. These new Performance Street Series rear shocks here are using a hardened chromed 15 millimeter new piston rod, 35 millimeter piston shaft, 55 millimeter hard wide body for an increase in oil volume for helping with compression, a new performance compression valve. It also has upgraded reinforced OEM rubber bushings, which are a better quality than some of the other polyurethane options in the category that can deteriorate pretty quickly. These are OEM quality with an upgraded reinforcement. Now, the same quality compression goes into the front struts here, which are built to handle the lowered application and upgrade your ride quality. Sometimes when you lower your truck, it can get pretty stiff and pretty rough very quickly if you're not doing it correctly. And with these upgraded shocks and struts, you're definitely doing it proper. Now, to accomplish the three inch lowered rear, you're also gonna be equipped with rear lowering shackles. These basically relocate the top of your leaf springs where it connects to the factory frame upward into the body to accomplish the rear look. Now these are gonna lower it three inches, like I said, so paired that with the lower two at the front, you're looking at a leveled stance. These are also going to delete your factory rear block. That's gonna be accomplished by having those leaf springs sit directly onto the top of your factory axle instead of using that lift block that it comes with off the factory line. Now that again, not gonna change ride quality at all. As a matter of fact, with the upgraded rear shocks, it should be a little more comfortable. Now this entire kit comes in right around 400 bucks. The install is gonna get two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. The good thing about this kit is it's not a rear axle flip, so it's not gonna be a pain in the butt. No real specialty tools are required for two wheel and four wheel drive applications. Normally when you lift the front of your truck, you'd have to pull vacuum on your four wheel drive actuator. Not gonna be the case here because we're going the other direction. Now with this, I'm gonna take you through every single step of the process here. We'll start at the front, tackle all that, then move on to the rear. It'll take you about three, maybe four hours. Let's get started. Tools using this install include an air impact gun, a cordless ratchet, half inch ratchet, 8, 10, 15, 18, 19, 21, 27, and 30 millimeter deep sockets. Swivel socket is recommended. Hammer, pry bar, torque wrench. 15, 18, and 21 millimeter wrenches. 15 and 18 millimeter ratcheting wrenches are recommended. Flathead, cutting wheel, gloves, and safety glasses. To kick things off in the front here, make sure you have your wheel out of the way and your truck properly supported either on a lift like we have or on the floor with jack stands and a hydraulic floor jack. Now, first step here, I'm gonna grab an eight millimeter socket and we're gonna disconnect the ABS line from the side of the knuckle and then the brake lines using a 10 millimeter socket. All right, so I'm gonna get that bolt out of the way there and then what I like to do is just take the bolt and put it right back into the hole so we don't lose it. All right, now the bolt right next to it is a 10 millimeter. That's for the brake line bracket. And then there's another one similar to that on the frame. All right, 
right. Now the reason we're doing that is just to give this a little bit more slack so that when we lower the lower control arm, we're not putting too much pressure on this. Next, we can disconnect our sway bar end link. Now, if your nut ends up getting stuck and spinning the stud, you can use a ratcheting wrench and a socket and ratchet to hold the stud here while you work that off. Uh, I'm gonna use air just to see if we can get enough torque on it, and then we'll take it from there. So this is gonna be an 18 millimeter deep socket. There she goes. All right, so that's good. What I'm gonna do now is just pop this guy on a couple of threads and just leave it a little loose. All right, so now we can head over to our tie rod end connected to our knuckle. Now this guy here is gonna be a 21 millimeter nut, so I'm gonna use my deep socket and get this off. I'm gonna thread that guy back on a little bit because we do have to knock this ball joint out of the socket here, and we're gonna use a hammer to hit against that. So you want the nut to catch it when it comes up. All right, perfect. Now we can use the same 21 millimeter socket. I'm gonna use a swivel socket on this guy to loosen up the nut on the upper control arm. So we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna put the nut back on and we can hammer this so we can disconnect the upper ball joint. All right, so now I'm gonna use a pry bar under that coil, pull down on the upper control arm, take this nut off, and then slowly and carefully let that guy back up. All right, so now we can disconnect our tie rod end by taking that nut off too. All right, so lift up on your knuckle, loosen up the nut, remove the tie rod end, and I'm gonna put that nut right back on. All right, next we can focus on the bottom strut bolt holding it to the lower control arm. This is an unusually large bolt. The bolt head is a 27 millimeter. I'm gonna put a short socket on my half inch ratchet, and the nut is a 30 millimeter, so I've got that on my impact gun. go. I'm just going to pull that nut off and set it aside. All right, so now what I'm going to do is use a hammer to tap that bolt out. All right, so the bolt had a little bit of tension on it, so I put a pole jack under our lower control arm and jacked it up to relieve that tension, and now we can wiggle this guy loose. If you're working on the ground, Put a hydraulic floor jack under this and just jack it up slowly until this becomes loose and then just pull it right out. Now we can lower it back down. All right, so next we can focus on our upper strut nuts. Now, these guys here are 15 millimeters. I'm gonna recommend using a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench just because you can work it back and forth. Not a whole lot of room for an impact gun. You can use a ratchet and socket if you need to. All right, so now you can get these off. All right, so now I'm gonna use a pry bar to take the bottom of our strut out of its seat and we can remove it all in one piece. Now we can head over to the compressor. So now we have our strut on our spring compressor. Now at this point, guys, you wanna make sure you're exercising extreme caution. This spring is under a lot of tension and if you don't compress it properly, it can get really dangerous. Now this guy here, we are about to compress. Once we do that, we'll be able to take the top nut off remove our factory strut hat, swap in our new strut, replace the top hat, and do it all basically in reverse. Now our truck here has seen about 120,000 miles. This guy has seen better days. It's pretty rusted at the top of the strut hat here, so there's a good chance we'll have to get a little creative in how we get our top nut off, but we'll see how it goes. If that is the same case for you guys, again, exercise extreme caution. If you have to do any cutting, make sure you have safety glasses on, so on and so forth. Now with this, let's compress and see how we're doing. That should about do it. Now we can grab our impact gun, maybe even some PB blaster, and take this off with our 18 millimeter socket. Next, we're gonna install our new strut through the bottom of our factory spring and we're gonna be reusing that strut top hat. Now, if you have to replace your top hat, now's a pretty good time to do so. We're also gonna be using the new spring seat. Now, at this point, if you are gonna be doing any increment between negative two and zero, you wanna be inserting the spacer rings below this seat here. 
Now that's gonna achieve a either negative one, half inch, or even a lifted height if that's what you're going with. Since we're going with the maximum drop, we have no rings inserted, and we're just going straight on to the spring seat here. So let's put that into the bottom. And because the spring is now gonna sit so much lower on the strut body, we don't even have to compress the spring that much. I'm gonna slide this guy through, just like that. And you wanna make sure the end of the spring is seated up against the end of that spring seat. Take the new nylon lock nut and thread it on there. Perfect, now we can tighten that down. There you go. All right, so now we can decompress and head back to the truck. All right, so now we can slide our strut back into position at our strut tower, and I'm gonna put one of our factory nuts here on the upper control arm just for easy access to tighten it down. All right, so you can see here that we'll need to rotate the bottom of the strut body in order for it to fit in and line up with the bolt holes. You can use just a flathead screwdriver for this. You're basically just gonna pry and rotate that guy around. So now let's seat it into the lower control arm. So now we can take our factory bolt and put it back through. Grab the nut, tighten it down by hand, and then you're gonna switch over to the 30 socket and the 27 with your impact gun. Next up, we can focus on getting our knuckle back into the upper control arm. So I'm gonna take this nut off there and lift this guy back up into place. All right, with your pry bar under the coil, you can pull down on the upper control arm to get a couple of threads through and put that nut on. That's really all we need, just a couple of secure threads, just enough to get that nut safely on. All right, now we can let go, connect our tie rod end, and then tighten them both up. All right, grab your 21 socket and tighten them down. Next, we can do our sway bar end link, put that 18 millimeter nut back on and tighten it down. All right, so now you can grab your 15 socket or your ratcheting wrench and tighten down the top nuts. Last step here is to reconnect your brake line. So I'm gonna do the eight millimeter first and then the two tens. All right, with that last brake line attached, that's gonna wrap up our driver side install. You can repeat this exact same process on the passenger side. It is very important, guys, that you go back and torque down all the bolts to spec. You wanna make sure you're looking up the torque specs for your specific model, trim, and package, just to make sure you've got it done correctly. At that point, you can head over and do the rear. So that's where we're heading now. Now I know we already have our front strut from Belltech installed with our coil, everything's put together on the front, but I quickly wanted to hold up the factory strut, show you guys exactly the difference in seat height for the spring. And I mean, visually you can see the factory one's black, the new one is silver, no performance differences there. When you hold this up to the new strut, you'll notice the factory strut had the spring seated up higher along the strut body than our new Belltech, which sits significantly lower to start achieving that lowered front end height. And then of course, with the new strut, you'd insert those springs below this to boost that back up to either factory height, anywhere in between, or even a lifted application for some other kits there. Now, because this is a lowering kit, we have that slammed, but you can clearly see the bigger difference there. You'll also notice the new bump stop on the new strut, which is tucked up under that boot, is a little bit shorter and a little bit different in color, but as far as quality, all the same OEM quality there. Just wanted to show you guys that spring seat difference. All right, now starting on the rear, the first thing we're gonna do is tackle both of our rear shackles. Now, in order to do that, I've got two pole jacks supporting our rear axle, one on each side, with no pressure on the axle itself. So the pole jacks are there for support, but just underneath of the axle itself. So now I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter wrench, and I'm gonna hold the bolt head from the top where the leaf spring connects to the factory shackle, the top of that, not the shackle to the frame just yet. So bolt heads on the inside, I'm holding that with an 18, and I'm gonna use my impact gun and my 21 millimeter deep socket to take that nut off. Now for the bottom of the shackle, it's basically the reverse. I have an 18 millimeter socket on my impact gun and a 21 millimeter wrench holding that nut. 
All right, at this point, we can jack up the rear axle a little bit to relieve pressure off of this bottom shackle to frame bolt. We'll be able to pull that out. So let's jack this up just a hair. And you just wanna kinda of wiggle the bolt around and feel where that sweet spot is. Looks like I found it. I'm gonna go straight out with this. Now in theory, that same spot relieves the tension on this bolt, but as you can see, the bolt head's on the other side and it backs into the frame. So what we need to do is jack up the leaf spring so that this bolt is above the frame in this little area here, this little pocket, and then we'll be able to back that bolt out. From there, got the bolt out above the frame, I can pull that factory shackle off. At this point, guys, you can repeat that exact same process up until this point on the other side. So we're gonna grab both bolts out of the shackles, raise it up, make sure the bolts can clear the frame, and pull the factory shackle off. All right, so we got our factory rear shackle off. I'm holding our driver's side one, and it's next to our new three-inch rear lowered shackle from Belltech. Quickly want to talk about some differences here. Really, the only thing different is the upgraded fully welded steel construction. It has reinforced OEM rubber bushings. So similar bushings to the factory one, reinforced, and it's already got the bolt sleeve inserted, so no need to lubricate that and insert it yourself. This guy here looks like it has a bunch of adjustment holes, but the top guys are what we're gonna focus on for this, making sure the angles are done properly, and then your bottom here is gonna to attach to the frame. Now this one here is obviously taller. Now that might seem counterintuitive to what we're trying to do since we're lowering the vehicle and you'd think it'd be shorter, but reality is you're actually pushing the leaf spring up into the bed to achieve that lowered look. So a taller shackle is what we'd want, and you can see that about three inches of difference there, and that's what we have. All right, now at this point, we gotta break out our cutting wheel. We're gonna have to trim up this little pinch weld here because once we have the shackle installed onto our leaf spring, the bolt and the assembly up here will interfere with this pinch weld here. So what I'm gonna do, and you can get creative with this in any way that you see fit, I'm gonna use a cutting wheel, and I marked with a Sharpie a line here and a line there. I'm just gonna make one straight cut at each one of those lines and then bend that entire tab back. That way, bent back, we'll have enough clearance for that bolt. Now, of course, you can do it any way you see fit. If you just want to notch out where the bolt exactly lands, then you can do that. But this, I feel like, gives you a wide enough range that it should be perfect. All right, now, of course, make sure you have protective glasses on. I'm using gloves as well, and then get the job done. All right, so I have those two relief cuts. Now I'm going to take a hammer and just flatten her out. All right, so as you can see, when we made our slice, we hammered it flat or flatter. That way we can have some clearance here for the top of our leaf spring. Now, the leaf spring doesn't necessarily sit directly in that cutout, but the top of it would probably come in contact with that pinch weld and cause some vibration, which is why you wanna do that. Next, what we're gonna do is we have our leaf spring raised upward toward that pinch weld into roughly the same position it would be in once it's installed. I'm gonna take our new shackle and I'm going to loosely install this guy before doing the other side. Now you'll notice that the, the rear shackle here has a backing plate and the front is wide open. The wide open you want facing the front of the vehicle. This is gonna be facing your rear bumper. So we're gonna install that. And you're basically gonna slide this guy over the bushing on your leaf spring first and line up the top bolt hole. This first hole is where you wanna go. Slide the rear or the back down toward the bottom here of the frame and line up those bolt holes. Now for that, I'm just gonna take a bolt and I'm gonna slide this guy through just like that. For the bottom shackle to frame bolt, you want the bolt on the outside of the vehicle. For the top, you're gonna to make sure it's reversed and the bolt head's gonna be right here above the frame on the back side. Perfect, now we can put the nuts on loosely and then tackle the other side. Perfect, now repeat this exact same process on the passenger side.
All right, at this point, you want to jack up the rear end to compress the suspension and then tighten down your bolts on the rear shackles. So this guy here, again, is an 18 millimeter head and a 21 millimeter nut. So that's what we're going to do next. Now you can do the top one and reverse with the 18 millimeter wrench and 21 millimeter socket. With the shackles out of the way, let's focus on removing our factory block. Now that's the block between your leaf springs and your axle here. So we're going to remove that and we're going to work on replacing our shocks. First thing we're going to need to do is work simultaneously unbolting the bottom of our shock on both sides. Then we're going to loosen the four U-bolts here, slide our block out, tighten this guy back up with the spacers included in the kit, and then we'll replace our shock. Grab an 18 millimeter wrench and a 15 millimeter socket and we're going to remove the bottom shock bolt on both sides. Next, I got my 21 millimeter deep socket. Let's loosen up all four bolts on our U-bolts here in order to slide our lift block out. Now, we ultimately will have to remove it. I'm not gonna gun these completely off just yet. Just bring them down to a couple of threads. Make sure you have a pole jack or a floor jack supporting your rear axle. All right, so here you can see we have a bigger gap between our leaf spring and our factory lift block. I'm just gonna slide that guy up and out of the way. So next we're gonna have to jack up this axle here to close this gap so that our leaf spring connects to the axle plate here. Now when we do that, we're gonna run out of threading and this isn't gonna be properly tight enough, so that's why Belltech includes these spacers. One of these thick spacers will go right in between each one of the nuts at the bottom of the plate between that and the nut right there. So let's close this gap, take the nuts all off, slide the spacers onto each bolt and then tighten it back up with the nuts. When you do this, you want to make sure those little knobs at the bottom of the leaf spring are seating into their open hole positions on the bottom plate. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lift this guy up. I'm going to take one of the nuts off. I'm going to insert the spacer and then put the nut right back on. Do that for all four. All right, so now let's repeat this process for the other side. At this point, we've taken care of our passenger side, but I wanted to show you guys what we're doing here. With the lift spacers in here above our nuts, what we're basically doing is trying to get the knobs on the bottom of the leaf spring to fit into the indents in our axle seat. Now, in order to do that, it's kind of a trial and error process on both sides. You're going to be basically jacking this guy up and you're gonna be going from different angles, pulling the axle one way to the other to make sure that these seat. Right, so that just sat perfectly there. The other side's done, so at this point we're going to tighten up our nuts. Now when you do this and you tighten your U-bolts, two things you want to make sure of. Number one, make sure the top of the U-bolt is still in its proper seat, its proper location. And second, when you tighten these up, you want to make sure the bolts are as even all the way around as possible. You want to make sure it's got about the even amount of threads coming through the nut when they're all tight. Next, we can unbolt the top of our shock to remove that and replace it. This is going to be an 18 millimeter nut and a 15 millimeter bolt head.
We got our factory shock off of our passenger side. Quickly, just wanted to show you guys this next to our new street performance option from Belltech. Now, I know we already went through the details of this guy. I'm not gonna repeat them. They were earlier in the video there. I just wanted to show you just a quick side-by-side -side of these two. The factory shock, of course, is black. This one's silver. There's an obvious visual difference. But as far as the bushings here, you can see that they're very similar. This is just a reinforced OEM rubber bushing. This is the factory rubber bushing, which is looking a little worse for wear. So getting those new ones in there definitely go a long way. But the bigger thing I wanna point out here is the shaft or the shock body here is again that 55 millimeter wide body for that bigger oil volume. You can see that that's a little bit larger in diameter than the factory one here. Now I don't have the proper measurement for this, but you can clearly see just a slightly bigger difference between the two and that's gonna help there with compression. And of course this has the performance specific compression valve. So this all in all is just built to handle this lowered application. So what we're gonna do now is put this guy in. And if we put them next to each other, you can see the new street performance one is just a little bit shorter, which is gonna help with that lowered application as well. So let's put it in. You wanna make sure you're putting it in the same way the factory one came off. This dust boot at the top is the top. That's gonna to go up toward the frame. The bottom of this where that wide body is will connect to the axle. So let's put that in using the factory hardware. All right, so now before I tighten the top, I just wanna to reconnect the bottom and it looks like it's lining up perfectly. So we don't really have to compress or play with any of the height on the axle. All right, so now we can tighten them both down and then we'll repeat for the other side. At this point, guys, you wanna make sure you're going back, researching your torque specs for your specific vehicle like you did for the front. Make sure you torque down your wheels, go for a road test, make sure everything settles properly, and you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install here for the Belltech Stage 3 lowering kit with the plus two, minus two front, and minus three rear. Available for your 09 to 14 F-150, excluding the Raptor. You can get yours right here at americantrucks.com.